Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Keep It Fictional video chat and podcast. I'm here again with my amazing co-workers from the Port Moody Public Library. We got Miss Kareen, Sadie, Liz, and Fiona. How is everyone doing? Wonderful. Good. Thank you. How are you, Virginia? So excited, everyone. It's they, the best day of the week. Best day of the week. It is. It is. Yes. Yes. Oh, and I know. Know. yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's supposed to be fall, which is some people's favorite season. Except it doesn't act like fall right now. Not right now. But soon. Hopefully soon. And I think last week we talked about a favorite thing about fall. Books. Obviously. Um, but I know fall is also, especially September, is also a time where people think about back to school. So... Before we start our books about back to school, because we're going to do an episode of books that are set in school or that feature school or that talks about school life and all that. Um, I guess I should find out from everybody. What is your favorite? This is a, a requested question. What is your favorite school supply? Liz. Oh, definitely the pens. Pens okay. in all kinds of colors, in all kinds of nib sizes okay all kinds of pens you know the thin ones and then the thick ones pens you can doodle with pens you can write with i'm serious oh. about pens <laughs> moving on corinne <laughs> Um, I'm actually going to go if i'm going if i'm thinking back to when i was actually going to school um full scap you know, like the, the lined paper, something about it being all like blank and fresh and new, just like excited me. Okay, sure. All the potential of all the things that you exactly. will be writing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Fiona, how about you? Um, probably notebooks or backpacks, if that's allowed to count. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, notebooks. Mm -hmm. And Sadie? Um, thinking back, definitely pencil crayons. Love me a good set of pencil crayons. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, day timers. I always love buying a good day timer so that I can plan everything, write out my calendar. Yeah, I like structure. <laughs> and you, Virginia, what was your favorite school supply? Um. I think when I was back in Hong Kong, you actually get to buy books. Like you have, mm -hmm. yeah, I know, right? So and it's like one of those like bookstore where you can't really browse because you're not allowed to, but like it's like a counter basically. And then you just give, like tell them what school you're from and what, what um you know, like what grade you're in. And then they just give you all brand new books. Mm -hmm. That's probably that most exciting thing. Yeah. That sounds dreamy. Yep. Yeah, we just sniff the book like oh, so good oh brand. speaking of sniffing i i will also amend to like that white craft glue that you'd like put over your hands and then like slowly <laughs> peel off just me okay that's fine nope nope, mm -hmm. nope. anyways <laughs> <laughs> We so always really learn so much about each other. <laughs> Every single time. I think that's what all the audience always say. It's just like, yeah, what's what's wrong with them? Mm -hmm. Like, every week. People are going to um, start buying Korean containers of white glue now. White glue, yes. And if you know when, when all the white glue disappear from the library, you know you know mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. Why are we buy white glue again? Why are we out of white glue again? Hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah. Anyway, so great, great. So let's talk about books, books that hey. are set Woo. in school. And I think Sadie has a very school, mm. definitely like, you know, a school, school book here. So it is. What yeah. have you got for us, Sadie? Okay. Um, so I love back to school. I September is one of my favorite times of year because it is the fall, but also because I love back to school. And even now that I am no longer in school, I still love like the energy of going back to school. So this is a very exciting week for me, and I am going to be talking about Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Uh, Lee Bardugo has mostly written YA books. Uh, she has two series, um, kind of interconnected series, 
uh, for YA, which I have absolutely loved as well. Uh, and this is her first adult um, series. And so this book takes place, the school in question is Yale University. And the ninth house in question is the ninth secret society at Yale University. So everyone or many people have heard of the eight secret societies at uh, Yale University. This includes the Skull and Bones, the Scroll and Key, the Book and Snake, the Wolf's Head, Manuscript, Aurelian, St. Elmo's, and Berzelius. So these are the eight secret societies, eight houses of Yale University. As far as I know, they actually exist. So this is not fictional. Um, so this book revolves around the ninth house and it tells the story of Alex Stern. And Alex has not had a great life. Uh, she ended up dropping out of high school. She is now living with her drug dealer boyfriend, um, a friend of hers, Helly, as well. They're not really doing that good. Um, she sort of knows that she's not going anywhere in life until she wakes up in the hospital as the sole survivor of a massive murder. Helly has been killed. Her boyfriend has been killed. Everybody who was in this house has been killed except for Alex. She is found there and she was the only one that survived. She wakes up and the Dean of Yale University is at her bedside with an offer for her. He tells her that if she comes to Yale and joins this ninth house, which is called Leth, L-E-T-H-E, then he will give her basically a free ride in Yale. So she doesn't have to pay for anything. She doesn't have to apply. She just gets to kind of leave her, her um, old life behind and try for a new life at Yale. So she decides that she, she will do this. And she goes to Yale and joins this secret society called Leth. Uh, one very special thing about Alex is that she has always been able to see what are called greys. And not surprising to most people, greys, um, this book does have magic in it, and greys are ghosts. So uh, Alex has always been able to see ghosts. And this is one of the reasons that they would like her to join the secret society. Um, so this secret society, unlike all of the other houses, is actually in charge of monitoring the other eight houses. So they attend all of the ceremonies, they attend all of the occult rituals that all of these other houses at Yale um, part participate in. And they are there to make sure that nothing goes wrong, that everyone is kept safe, and that no magic um, leaks out to the rest of the world. So at one of these rituals, Alex's mentor, uh, Daniel Arlington, disappears. Nobody knows what's happened to him. The university covers it up, uh, tells everyone that he's on a trip to Spain, but everybody who is at the ritual and Alex knows better. At the same time, there is a murdered student that shows up on campus. Alex is sent to investigate uh, this murder and determine whether or not it is connected to one of the secret societies and whether it is connected to magic. So our story is told sort of in a different a few different points of view. Uh, we see the present day where Daniel has already disappeared. Alex is now holding up in a apartment, injured. We have no idea what's happened to her. She's trying to figure out what has happened to, to, Al, um, to Daniel. And that's kind of all that we know when we start the book. And then as it goes on, we start to see flashbacks and we start to see what actually happened in the months leading up to, to this attack, leading up to Daniel's disappearance. Um, and we kind of learn more about Alex. We learn more about the murder that she survived and learn more about her potential involvement in that and why she was the only one to survive um, that murder, as well as all of the occult connections to all of the houses in Yale University, as well as the teachers, the students, and everyone who goes to Yale University. Uh, so lots of magic lots of occult demons, ghosts, uh, that kind of stuff, but all on the lovely fall campus of Yale University in the Ivy Leagues. Um, a lovely setting for all of this magical um, occult mystery to, to go down. So I would highly recommend Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. You're welcome. You're Thank welcome. you, Sadie. I wish my right? was that exciting. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no one else wants to. Uh... <laughs> yeah. 
death. Yes. Find some sort of occult book. I prefer and... my campus is demon free. No. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Well, what kind of school do you have for us, Miss Kareen? Well, this is a book actually set in kind of my dream school. So it is 1930s and we are in a girls boarding school in England, which of course, as a young kid, I was dying to go to boarding school. The skirts, the blazers, oh, the learning Latin. Yeah, it was everything I wanted, but um, I ended up going to public school. So it's the 1930s and newly arrived to the boarding school of Deep Dean is Hazel Wong. And she is newly arrived from Hong Kong. Her father is an incurable Anglophile. Um, and he just loves the idea of his daughter going to a boarding school like they do in the books that he reads. And so she kind of puts up a brave face and goes to this new school in this new country. Um, but inside she despairs. The food is terrible. Uh, the weather is terrible. The people are pretty full-time terrible. The only kind of interesting thing at the school so far as she can see is that there is one other person at that school who is kind of hiding what they are inside. And that person is Daisy Wells. Now, Daisy Wells is blonde and outgoing and seemingly a bit simple, but in every way is the flower of British maidenhood. Gentle, simpering, and just so excited to be here. But Hazel is observant, Hazel is sharp, and she knows that Daisy is not who she pretends to be at school. Daisy is instead a bit of a bossy boss um, with a very, very sharp mind. She's incredibly intelligent, um, as is Hazel. And they kind of bond over their mutual love of solving mysteries and observing people and trying to discover all of their secrets. And so to this end, they found the Wells and Wong Detective Agency. It's been a while since they founded their detective agency and they have yet to get like a real case because there is not a lot of crime that happens in a girls boarding school in the 1930s in the middle of nowhere. Thankfully, or unthankfully, depending on where you are in this situation, one day when Hazel forgets her sweater in the gymnasium and has to run back after the rest of the class is empty, she stumbles upon the bloodied body of her science teacher, Miss Bell, lying in a pool of blood all alone. Shocked, aghast, um, Hazel runs out of the room to find Daisy, her best friend, and to find the headmistress of the school. But when she brings them back to the gymnasium to show and help, the body is gone. And the gym is sparkling clean. So both Hazel and Daisy are going to first have to solve the mystery of what happened and who happened to their science teacher, and secondly, convince everyone that this crime actually happened in the first place. So I love, this is a series. It is published in um, Canada and the US. The first book is called Murder is Bad Manners. In the UK, it was published as Murder Most Unladylike. And it is a uh, nine book series it lately just ended the last book has been published in england um they are still kind of catching up here in north america but i maybe went and ordered all of these as my quarantine present to myself to read later um, i love this series because it, it really grows um hazel and daisy daisy kind of starts as as not really respecting Hazel and Hazel starts as a little bit shyer and you see her kind of develop her her muscles and her assertiveness and kind of like find herself and her way she's a really fascinating narrator and you're just like cheering for her at the end and what I really like is that at its core this is very much like Agatha Christie meets Enid Blyton and those are just like they're my jam, all put together under a fantastic package. Um, so this is primarily meant for middle grades. However, as an adult who has watched all of the Poirots, um, I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And would heartily, heartily recommend it to anyone who loves that kind of like golden age of detection. And as you know, since Karina is such a big mystery fan, this is high praise, high praise from her. 
if she thinks it's good, everybody should give it a try. Except Virginia, probably. You'll hate it. But, yeah, probably. Because <laughs> yeah. we like completely different kind of mystery. So, all right, Fiona. What kind of school do you have? I unmuted myself. Okay. <laughs> so um, the book I chose is actually a graphic novel, um, and it takes place in a high school called Super Mutant Magic Academy. Um, now, this is actually a, a day school, so it's not a boarding school. Um, and the students all have not necessarily superpowers. Um, some do, but sort of just anomalies. Some of them have lizard heads. Uh, some of them can never die. It's a real mix. Um, and uh, they go to this school um, for such children. Um, but in reality, the school is uh, really a lot like a regular high school. They are really more like teenagers with regular problems. Um, they just happen to be a little bit more freakish uh, than the freaks of high school. Um, so this is by Jillian Tamaki um, of the Tamaki Cousins. Um, so with her cousin, she wrote Skim and This One Summer, uh, both excellent, excellent books. Um, but I really like to read her stuff uh, that she's done on her, on her own. It tends to get a little bit weirder, a lot less structured. Um, and this did originally come out as a web comic. While I don't like to read comics on the web, I love when they publish them as books for me. <laughs> um, so if you did enjoy my pick of um, Women World, uh, this is, has a real similar vibe. It's super understated. Um, it is not at all a superhero comic, if that's what you're thinking. Um, it's more of like a slice of life for teenagers with this weird backdrop, um, which I really, really love. It doesn't do a lot of world building. It just drops you in the world and says, okay, this student has a dinosaur head. Just uh, deal with it. Um, so Marsha is our lead character um, and she has a deep, deep crush on her best friend, Wendy, um, and is just suffering through high school uh, with the fact that she can't really tell Wendy uh, um, and she just has a lot of angst coming out of this. They spend all their time together. Uh, they're great friends, but it is very clear that they have different uh, expectations from their friendships or different desires from their friendships. Um, there's also Adam, the everlasting boy, who um, can't die or when he does die, he's just rejuvenated. Um, there's Gemma and uh, Francis and Francis, to my knowledge, doesn't have any superpowers. Uh, she just is really into art and performative art. Um, and Gemma, Gemma's sort of her like, simple best friend who uh, follows her around and uh, comments on her ridiculous performative art pieces. Um, of course, there's also, you know, like the jocks and the, the same tropes that you would see in every high school, um, but they just have this sort of hilarious twist to them. And um, we follow Marsha through a lot of it um, and get some side characters as well. And it does eventually culminate into a storyline at the end. Um, but most of them are sort of one-off comics, uh, little laughs that um, add to a bigger story in the universe, much like uh, Women World that I spoke about before. So um, I love the way this captures uh, teenage angst um, sort of the like the weirdness and self-consciousness that teenagers feel um, and it and I love how understated it is I just I love that it, you know uh, Tamaki chose this setting um, without sort of the intention of, of dipping into that genre um, it's just sort of like you know what would make this more fun for me to write is if they were all uh, super mutants and, and so that's what she did. It's definitely a very personal project, I think. And um, 
So if you like her humor, um, then I, I highly recommend it. And for those of you who don't know, uh, her humor is just sort of, um, again, like understated. Uh, she won't explain things. She'll just leave them there for you. Very much about um, acknowledging the strangeness of existence. Uh, so I find her quite amusing. And this is one of my favorite of her works. You're muted, Virginia. Kind of losing your commentary, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not important. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying how, like, I love when Fiona said, like, oh, they have my classmate has a dinosaur head. Just deal with it. Yes. One of them has a dinosaur head, and then one of them doesn't die. Like, it's completely normal. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's just what it is. It's just what and it they is. Have no, you know, um, so I'm saying they have no feelings of superiority Sorry, over each other, of like, you know, one of these things is a little more useful. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously the dinosaur, the dinosaur head. Head <laughs> versus immortality. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think we all know which one people would pick in that situation. Dinosaur head. Um, before we go on, um, talking about like sort of high school, you know, like maybe we should kind of talk about what, I guess in high school, we're kind of stuck reading a lot of books that we don't get to choose, not like our book chat. Um, so what are some of the books, or give you, give you have a favorite book that you read during high school that you are like, it's not of your choice, but you were forced to read it for school, but it still turns out to be okay. So Fiona, do you have um, a book? I don't know if this counts because I did. I, I, can't, I feel like maybe our teacher gave us a list and let us choose from that um, in grade 10. And I chose Watership Down off, off of that list. Um, and until like, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I would have said that was my favorite book. I loved it. Nice. I never nice. read the book, but the movie, the movie terrified me. So creepy. Yeah, I think that's why I just didn't want to engage with that at all anymore because the movie was so terrifying. <laughs> but maybe I should try it now if you, if you recommend it. If, if that freaked you out um, and you didn't enjoy that experience, then uh, I would say don't. <laughs> no. I was also very young though. I feel like I may have seen it younger than I should have. Yeah, the book is beautiful, really beautiful. What about you, Sadie? What have you read in high school that you actually mm. So again, I feel like there was a list and I really didn't want to read the other books on the list is what I remember. And so I read The Chrysalids and I actually really, really enjoyed it. And if you ask me to describe what it's about now, I have I cannot remember at all, but I just remember actually wanting to read it when I was reading it, not having to force myself to sit down and just get through it. Um, so yeah, Chris Lutz, I think John Wyndham is the author of that one. And uh, then I also, I'm a huge Shakespeare fan. So I loved, we read Macbeth, we read Hamlet. And I think Macbeth is my all time favorite Shakespeare play ever. So I really enjoyed reading that um, in grade 11 as well. It was nice to hear that the school system has changed because there was definitely no choice when I was there. <laughs> choice, what is this? You know, everybody reads the same book. What are you talking about? Um, Corrine. Um, we did a lot of Canlet, which I feel um, has made some of the issues that I might have with Canlet. But the one that I really remember having like a powerful impact was uh, Joy Kagawa's Obasan. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember reading that in class and just like openly weeping, which is of course what you want to do in high school in the middle of English class is just start crying. Um, but I remember kind of getting to the end and you realize what has happened and the writing is so sparse and so beautiful and so poetic that it just kind of moved me so much that, that I was weeping openly in a high school full of other high school students. <laughs> Who I'm sure responded really well to that, and as, as yeah, as high school students do. 
Liz? Hey, I feel like my high school literature experience has been very different from all of yours so far. Um, first off, no choice whatsoever. Um, and didn't get to read great books like Watership Down or The Chrysalids or, um, yeah, like none of that, like, <laughs> um, or Obasan. Like, um, I, I, I was aware of these books. I heard that other um, people that I knew in the school had read these in their classes, but for whatever reason, I was not granted the privilege or the joy. Um, so only in university did I realize that I really dislike prescribed reading because I've had such bad luck with it. Um, that being said, uh, not necessarily favorite books, but I'd say um, ones I actually may have enjoyed in high school are uh, Ray Bradbury's uh, Fahrenheit 451. Uh, and then also kind of got on the Shakespeare kick with um, works like Hamlet. You got to read Fahrenheit 400. We had to read Something Wicked This Way Comes, which is a lesser work. I'm so jealous, Liz. I am so So I guess jealous. I left it out somewhere along the line. You really did. We had to Touché. read Stone Angel and like, <laughs> ugh. Camlet. <laughs> Again, not big on the camera. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> no. No. What about you, Virginia? Um, I think when I came here, like none of the books make any sense to me, obviously. <laughs> and I think the first book I was forced to read was The Pearl. Steinbeck, yeah, uh huh. Like and it was a ESL class, right? So it's like they just figure, well, it's a book that is short. So let's just give it to them when there is no way, just because the book is short, doesn't mean it's in any way that we could relate to or understand. So that was, I think that was my, that was probably my, like, yeah. I know, yeah. I was just like, why, That's why? Um, I did I did end up enjoying, like, at some point, Steinbeck's books, but not not at that point. Not in when a first year when trying to learn English. That doesn't work. Um, but I think, like, Sadie, um, Chrysalids was good. Um, Flowers for Algernon, I think, is another book that I remember reading. That was that was good. Um, but other than that, it was all a lot of like like all quiet on Western Front and farewell to arms and all that. And it was like blah. So yeah, nope. So yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. I know. That's why I'm like choices. What is this like that you get to pick choices? Yeah. Yeah, choices. That's adorable. <laughs> right. So cute. Adorable. Like. Um. But I guess one other question would be like, do you think prescribed reading is? Does that does that? I mean, Liz clearly thinks that that's not helpful. But would you have picked up any of those books if it weren't prescribed? I guess that would be what I wouldn't have picked up the Stone Angel. I actually enjoyed the Stone Angel. I didn't mind it that much. Yeah, I don't know. At, right. at one point, you were told basically like that classics is what you should read, so mm -hmm. the Stone Angel and all that fits yeah. into that. You, I, I do just, like the Ring Heights. I feel like you can get the same. I feel like you can get the same thing out of reading a book that you pick yourself, and maybe like. If you're not being forced to read the book, wouldn't you enjoy it more? Wouldn't you? I don't know. That's my that's my thoughts. But I guess it's also like that you're forced to do homework on it. You're forced mm -hmm. to like write an essay about it. You're forced to and and like analyze it. I guess that's what makes it not enjoyable in some yeah. way. I guess maybe. I did a lot of not reading books and just like looking up Cole's notes because I was being forced mm -hmm. to read it and it was like you can't make me read this um yeah so I think like they'd have a like and then you go but like I know some people in university read Dracula and I was like oh whatever and then when you go and read classic literature for the first time after being out of school and you don't have to think about it critically <laughs> or like write about it and it's such an enjoyable experience mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes <laughs> Yes, or you can just put it down because you're like, I don't want to read this. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Yeah. All right. Anything else about high school books? Found memories. 
The only memory that I strongly have is that we had to do a group project about something Wicked This Way Comes, and ours was about the main character's development over the course of the book. And I was paired with someone who had the idea that at the beginning, the character was like dough, and then by the end, he was bread because he had been baked and developed by the end and then distributed fresh baking to everyone in our class. <laughs> I was going to say, did you bake bread for your presentation? <laughs> I didn't because I thought it was a cheap gimmick, but we got an A, so that's, that's amazing. Kind of I learned yeah, how this. I learned how the system worked. <laughs> it's symbolic. I feel like if you focus on the symbolism, then yeah, <laughs> totally. It is like bread, and oh, wow. I'm sure we can talk about this. We could talk about this all day, but when that person got to university, or if they went to university, I'm sure they had a rude awakening of like. <laughs> I the first time they brought homemade muffins to their English class, it just didn't go over the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really want to hear what um, our viewers read in high school, because now I'm like really, really mm. interested. Like, what is there a standard? Do people read the same things? What province are you from? Where did you go to high school? Well, I feel like even between mine and my sister, who was two years older than me, we even had different options for books to read so i don't know if it was just teachers would pick like they have a, a big list and they get to pick from that big list and it just kind of depends but yeah it would be interesting to know but i guess given the people that come into the library to ask for books for the school i don't know how much it has actually changed we were talking about that earlier right mm -hmm. like kind of the same titles that keep coming up so yeah, but do let us know in the comments what kind of high school books you have to read, especially the good ones, you know, the ones that you love or hate, I guess. Or maybe later on discover, like when you, I don't know why you reread it again, but later on when you discover, hey, you know, maybe this is not so bad. Some people reread books, Virginia. It's you know, okay. You decided that you hate it in high school. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I don't know. Yeah, reread books. Okay, that's, an, that's another conversation. Go back to a couple episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> you get that other argument. All right, so um, let's move on to more books that are set in school. Which one am I talking about? Okay, um, can I? I still can't decide. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing about like being able to control this because I can just decide in the last minute. So this is like not helpful. Not helpful at all. I think I'm gonna just go with something fun because I'm tired of talking about sad things. Okay, so, um, so the one that I have. So I was telling everybody how I spent a bunch of like like the whole weekend, the whole long weekend, trying to find a book that is set in school that I like and, and try to read a bunch of them. And none of them really turns out. Either they weren't, they just weren't school enough or they were like just not very good. Um, so I end up just, I'm like, you know what? Let's just go with something that I know I enjoy. And this is not like, don't think too hard on it. This is nothing deep. It is just a fun, silly book. And it is... A manga series called Assassination Classroom. I do have the Japanese version here, but this is one of my first book that I bought in Japanese in, in a Seattle bookstore, which I wish I can go back to. But anyway, so this is Assassination Classroom. Um, like I said, don't think too hard on it. The premise of it is that there is an alien that has just destroyed the moon. He just blasted it into pieces. And he just came to Earth and he said, in a year, I'm going to do the same thing to Earth. But in the meantime, I'll give you a chance to kill me. And also, I would like to become a teacher. So what they end up doing is putting him as the homeroom teacher for classroom 3 E in this school. Because nobody cares about the kids in classroom 3 E. They're kind of the misfits. They're the ones that nobody thinks will become anything. So they're just like, whatever, let's just put them there. And in the meantime, we'll tell Classroom 3 Yi that your job every day, because you're, the, you're his students, you can get close to him, is to try to assassinate your teacher. That's what they're supposed to do. And if you succeed, whoever that managed to do that will have this like $100,000 cash prize. So every day the routine is when the teacher shows up, um, and they call him Koro-sensei because in Japanese, that's kind of a play on the word means 
like somebody you cannot kill. Um, so it's, and, and also teacher, which is sensei. So, um, so Kolo sensei will come in to class and he'll start his roll call. And while he was doing roll call, everybody will pull up all their weapons and all the guns and everything that they can find that the government gives to them and, and experimental high tech kind of weapons. And we'll try to um, kill the teacher every day. That's how they start school. But of course, um, it turns out that Kolo Sensei is also a very good teacher. <laughs> he's actually really good at what he's doing. He cares a lot about his teach his kids and he does he really believes in them. He doesn't think that they are useless and and that they are just a waste of time. Um, and he cares a lot about even though he's like a homicidal alien who's trying to destroy Earth, he still wants them to be good students. He cares a lot of them them turning into their home turning in their homework and and being good at it. Um, and and he turns out to be a very very nice guy somehow. Um, so like I said, <laughs> a weird random premise um and and it's sometimes quite sweet because of of what he does as a teacher um and i think this is the kind of like manga that i grew up with it's just kind of wacky crazy chaotic and you just don't think too much on the premise and it's just always kind of crazy and that's kind of what i grew up with and it always become like it always be sort of the kind of manga that i like the most um so if you're looking for some, something fun something crazy um try this out it is assassination classroom by yeah, by yes, Yusei Matsui. That is the author's name. Um, all right. That sounds a lot of fun. Sounds completely random. Completely random. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like the twist of the fact that he's actually a. Good he's teacher. a very good teacher, and he looks like an alien. <laughs> like he's like an alien. He's like oh. a smiley face, like an emoji <laughs> smiley face with a bunch of tentacles. <laughs> and his face color changes. He's usually yellow when he's normal, but it changes depending on his like feelings. So yeah. I know I have some adult friends that read and watch this, but what's the like what's the youngest age you would recommend it for? <laughs> um I, I think it's weird because like it's because I grew up with it. Like I was really young when I'm like watching stuff like this. So it's I think I have a very different gauge of what is acceptable and what is not so i don't know if i'm the best judge for this <laughs> but i would assume it's a like probably marketed as teen here. i think it's marketed for teen but as we say you know your child best so some stuff that's like marketed to teen if you're a tween who can kind of like handle stuff like that then then it's probably okay but yeah you know yeah, your kids it's best. not like i'm like it's funny to say that it's not violence but it's like it's not do you know what I mean? It's not the that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not uh, what is it? Attack on Titan. It's not Attack on Titan. Oh, it's not an Attack on Titan. Which is equally good. Please go read Attack on Titan also. <laughs> but this is not like it's, it's not serious. Like it's not like that at all. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so yes, that's my pick. And um, continuing our Japanese translation translated novels or comics. Um, we're saving, well, at least Corinne and I. See, Corinne and I never agree on anything, but we agree that the next pick that Liz has is the book that we hope we were, <laughs> like, you know, we were kicking ourselves for not picking. Liz, what have you got for us? Okay, way, way to hype it up, Virginia. Thanks a lot. Way to hype it up. Uh, <laughs> so, as Virginia <laughs> mentioned, uh, this is a uh, book originally written in Japanese that was translated into English, and it's called. Confessions, sorry for the glare, everybody. Confessions by Kane Minato. Um, and this book is bananas in its own way. So no aliens here, but uh, it is quite the psychological thriller. Now, this book does primarily take place in a school, a middle school where one of the teachers is named Yuko Moriguchi. Now she's a single mother and her pride and joy at home is her four-year-old daughter. Now, sadly, uh, that daughter, who she sometimes takes to school with her, sadly, her daughter is found dead and drowned in the middle school's swimming pool one day. Um, it looks like an accident. Uh, looks like she just happened to wander into the pool area and fall in and wasn't able to get out of the pool. However, 
Moriguchi knows better. She's absolutely certain that two of her middle school students had killed her young daughter. And now because the two students are minors, she feels that it's useless to go to the police. They're minors, they'll get juvenile detention, they'll get rehabilitation, they won't truly be punished for their heinous crime. So she decides not to go to the authorities and take matters into her own hands. And that is the catalyst for this book. Now, after this tragedy, she has told the school that she will resign. But before she does, she gathers her class together for one last class, one last lecture. And in this lecture, she turns the entire class upside down by what she has to say. Now, this story is told from multiple points of view. Sometimes you're not sure if the narrator is being reliable or not. It's, it's definitely a psychological thriller. Uh, it really um, gets into the heads of the characters and, and what motivates them to do what they're doing, whether it be exacting revenge or to commit a crime uh, against another person. It's definitely a revenge story. It's very calculated um, in the way that the teacher Moriguchi um, exacts her revenge and starts to put her plan into action. Um, and it's also an interesting look at mothers and children. How do, how does the behavior of mothers uh, in child rearing, how does that influence what their children do? Well, you definitely see uh, what happens in this story. Um, lots of twists, lots of shocking moments. Um, so I can't really tell you too much about what exactly those things are, what exactly uh, she does to get the ball rolling in terms of exacting her revenge and how that all plays out. But this was definitely one of those books where I felt I had to devour this in one sitting. And I don't, I don't say that very often. Um, despite all the books that we do see at the library, uh, this was one of those unput downable books, so to speak, um, that I feel has really, I mean, everybody has, has seen or heard on our, on our book chats and our, our podcasts, um, you know, what diverse reading tastes we all have. And yet, um, for those of us in the group who have actually read the book, we've, we've all agreed hands down that this is, um, this is one of those books that stands the test of time in terms of um, a must read. So I do highly recommend Confessions by Kane Minato. So good, so good. And this is one of those books that does twists right. Because a lot of books are like, they say you have a two big giant twist, the ending, but it doesn't make any sense when they kind of review the end, but this one just like every chapter, Not you're like, oh! Yeah, every it's funny you say that, Virginia. I was reading this book. I used to have a very, very long commute and I was reading this book on a bus and I was in the window seat and someone was um, seated to my right. And I was reading this and I didn't realize it, but at the end of every chapter, I would go, oh! and then I'm like, oh! and finally the guy next to me just turns over. He's like, look, you know, I got to ask, what are you reading that's so good? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's the confessions you got to read. It's like, fine, because clearly you're enjoying it. So <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, love it. it. As you say, Virginia, it does it right because you don't see it coming and it just kind of, but it fits so well with everything. I'm intrigued. <laughs> Have we sold you on it, Fiona and Sadie? <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> we failed. We failed, Sadie, but we might no, have gotten it's, it. <laughs> it's just not my kind of book. Just not my, yeah. <laughs> I am pretty sensitive to, like, child violence. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what got me, too. <laughs> maybe not for you, but for everyone else. For everyone else. <laughs> great book. Great book. Like, dark and twisty and psychological, for sure. So good, so good. All right. Well, that is our show. We're early today. What's going on? Because we only have one book. We're only talking about one book each. Yeah, and we have to hurry to get back to school, Virginia. Oh. Right. Of course. Of course. Very good. Very good. 
School dreams. Do you all still have them? Sorry? Have what? School dreams. Where you realize yes. you're still in yes. school. Yes. Mm -hmm. I missed class or that I actually didn't graduate. Yeah. The one yeah, I that. have is that I have like, I've missed a whole bunch of classes in a semester. And now I have to take like a final yes. exam or write yes. a paper. Oh, yeah. And, God, and no. if I don't do that, I'm not going to get my credits. And yes. I'm not going to graduate. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah, the one with the final exam and the one that there's a paper due that I absolutely have not written. <laughs> yeah, should have gotten a better daytimer, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's all in the daytimer. <laughs> Keep track of those things. Yeah, and the right and the right pen. Exactly. Oh the yeah, right. they go hand in hand. You can color code the things that are due when and how. What yes, classes they're for? Yeah. Highlighters. Those are part yeah. of pens as well. The pen category. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I hate highlighters. It's so pointless. I just need the right highlighter. I hate it so much. Ooh. I always oh. have highlighter ambitions, but then never actually use them. Or like I'm gonna color code and then it's like you realize you read like three chapters and you haven't been thinking about Or you spend more time trying to remember what your color coding scheme was. I, do, I used to do that with highlighters. I would make it too complicated. <laughs> and then I'd pick one. I'm like, is this the right color? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> well, I'm glad we don't have to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, but to all of those who are going back into school in any capacity, Woo! we hope that you have an absolutely fantastic school year. Yes. Um, so many things to look forward to, so much learning to do, so much oh, yeah. reading, so much highlighting, so much writing. Um, so for all of our students, for all of our teachers, our professors, all of the support staff at the schools, uh, we hope that you have an absolutely fantastic school year from all of us at the Port Moody Public Library. Ooh, great. All right. Great. Well, <laughs> Thank you. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I have nothing else to say. Nothing else to add to that. Yeah. That would be yeah. perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. So next week, we'll, we'll be back at 12 mm -hmm. o'clock on a Wednesday again. So we'll see you again. I believe we'll have some more graphic novels mm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've got, wait, I've got another ending. Ready? But for now, school's out forever. Uh, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> Just rub it in that we don't have school and you do. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.